There was some edit. There was some comment on the editing track or something. Someone was like, and then we cut to Martin goofing around. I was like, hey, I'm not goofing around. This is serious business. We're making bagels. Okay, so today we're making Martin's bagels. This is a recipe that I wrote for my book and it's inspired by a bakery over in South Portland called Scratch Baking Company. I have a dear friend over there who makes some of the best bagels in the country, I think. And I modeled this method after her process to a degree. I made it a little bit easier for the home baker, but many of the process points are very similar. I take a lot of inspiration from Allison over at Scratch Baking Company in South Portland. All right, here we go, bagels. Starting now. This recipe starts with what is called a poolish. A poolish is a pre-ferment. It's basically a portion of the dough which you begin in advance. Then we let it mature or sort of ripen. And in that ripening or maturing process, it develops flavor. So the components of the poolish are water, flour, and a little bit of yeast. I stirred this together and a poolish is a liquid preferment, meaning that the consistency that I'm going to have here is roughly like that of pancake batter. So that's our poolish. We're going to let it mature or rise for two to eight hours. And then I'll show you what it's going to look like after that. Dum -da -da -da. And that's the poolish. You can see the activity, right? Lots of bubbles. The reason that we're here is because of what it smells and tastes like. So it smells like, it smells like bread dough rising. It smells like actually like bread baking because when bread bakes, it gives off all of those flavor or some of those flavor components which develop during fermentation, right? The smell of bread baking, it's incredible. So let's mix this dough. So I go into the bowl with the water and then I'm gonna put this poolish in here and I'm gonna kind of stir it up just to break it up some. So you can break this up. You can use your hands too. I actually really like to use my hands for this, but just for the sake of not having to go clean them up, I'll use a spatula. And then I've got my yeast, get my salt in, and the flour. And you can mix these in a mixer. You can mix them by hand. It, it doesn't really matter. All we're doing is just getting everything in the bowl to a homogeneous state. So we're just going to try and sort of smooth this dough out a little bit. Just switch, grab a flexible scraper. This is still just a little bit sort of chunky looking to me. So I'm just gonna sort of knead it in the bowl with this flexible scraper until it sort of smooths out a little bit. You can see I've got no strength, right? There's really no strength in this dough yet. It just breaks apart. That's okay. What we're gonna do is I'm just going to get it a little bit further here and then we're going to let it sit for an hour and then I'm going to give it a fold and after that hour you're going to see how much strength has come into this dough and then when we go to divide the dough that has risen overnight in the refrigerator you're going to see how it has a lot of strength. It's very stretchy. It's got a lot of elasticity and extensibility. Okay, so this dough is happy, happy nappy. Okay, so it's been an hour and it's time to fold this dough. It's already a little bit puffy. And remember how sort of shreddy it was before. Now you're gonna see how, just sort of the magic of time, this is a dough which has some strength. Look at that, strength and extensibility. So I'm gonna give this a pretty strong fold. I'm stretching and pressing. This is adding some strength. It's just sort of organizing things in the bowl too. So this dough, once I'm done with this fold, is going to get one more hour at room temperature and then it gets put into the fridge for the overnight period. And that's it. No kneading involved. That dough is ready to be covered. And we'll see it in the morning. It's easy, right? Super easy. I mean, there's no, there's no, that's it. You're done. Wait until tomorrow morning. Okay, you behave yourself in the fridge. Okay, so you saw me mix the poolish. You saw me stir together the mix. That dough then gets folded and it rises overnight. I have a dough that I prepared yesterday and let's have a look at what's going on here. 
So we have some fermentation bubbles. We have a dough which is really well risen, pat with flavor. It's ready to become a bagel. Look at that. Now, this makes 12 bagels, and so I'm just gonna divide it into 12 pieces. 110, 115 grams each. So I got a little bit of flour on my work surface, and let's get it divided. Okay, got a little scrap left. What do you do with the scrap? Don't throw it away. Just distribute it. All divided. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this initial rounding. So I'm just starting on the outside of the dough piece and I'm bringing it to the middle and pressing to seal. So I just work my way around. I'm gonna go a little bit further and I'm just gonna round it in my hands until I have this beautiful, smooth, round bagel. So I do most of the folding and then I invert it and I give it just a little bit of tensioning until it's nice and beautiful, round, smooth, and taut. So these, these are gonna hang out and relax for a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll give the final shape. Look at that beauty right there. These bagels have had I don't know, 15 minutes, somewhere in that range. Just a little bit of time to relax after rounding them and getting them ready for this stage of shaping. So we did our pre-shape. They're nice and round. They're quite strong. You know, we gave them a nice, firm sort of rounding. And now we're going to give them the stretch. I go right to the middle, and I press all the way through to the work surface. And then two fingers. and I just do this sort of situation. Now, I stretch them a little bit bigger than what they need to be because they're strong and they're elastic and they're gonna sort of retract a little bit. And then I put them back on my linen here. So in basically the center, I push my finger through and then I just stretch, give it a little bit of a stretch. Some are gonna be really nice and round, some are not. Okay, so these are shaped. And now we're just gonna let them rise for a little bit before we boil them. And they feel happy, they feel like they're moving to me. So this isn't gonna be long, like 15 minutes, um, somewhere in that range. If you wanted to slow them down a little bit, you could also put them in the fridge, like I said, covered, and leave them until tomorrow morning or something like that, um, just for ease. So that if you wanted to have bagels like top of day, like get up and the kids come downstairs or and all they smell are like those bagels baking, you could do that. So you could chill them at this, at this stage. All right, bagels ready to go into the boiling water. Now, I add a little bit to the water. I add some salt, about a tablespoon or so. And I'm using some barley malt. If you don't have barley malt, you can use molasses. You can use honey too. Or if you don't have either of those, just skip it, it's okay. So the other thing that you want to do, in addition to getting your water up and ready to receive those bagels, um, you want to set your seed tray if you want to seed them. I like bagels with seeds on them. I like to seed both sides. I think the more seeds, the better. The more seeds in life, generally, the happier I am. Now, you've got some options. I like our everything bagel topping. If you don't have that, you could also use um, poppy seeds. You can use sesame seeds. You can mix them all together and make your own version of an everything. Um, I also have some coarse salt, which is always kind of nice. Um, I like that as well. Now, I'm going to boil these bagels three at a time. And these are the ones that we shaped not so long ago. They're relaxed and they're ready to go in. So I'm just going to go in. One. And as I move them, I'm stretching them just slightly, just a little bit. I'm giving them a little bit of a stretch. And I'm going to give them 30 to 60 seconds on the first side and I'll get my seed tray ready to go here. That's about ready. Go ahead and turn it. Turn it. A slotted spoon is really helpful for this. I really like a nice slotted spoon. And I'll give them another 60 seconds, maybe a little bit more on the second side. And that looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll put it on this towel and I'll let some of that excess moisture uh, leave and then I'll place it on the seeds. Grab a second one. You can use your hands to do this. If you don't like that, you can also use like a wooden spoon, something like this. You can use a wooden spoon to turn them. That way, you, they are hot, you know? They are hot. And if you want full sort of seed coverage, you can even roll them around in there a little bit. 
and make sure that you've got all the seeds you want. Once they're done, I'll come over here and put them on the tray. Lots of seeds like that. Okay, so I'll put three more in. Once those are through, I'll grab another three. Now, the boiling process, what that does is it creates some shine as those starches in the flour hydrate, they get shiny. It also changes the texture of the crust. It thickens the crust just a little bit. I wanna do just some sesame, and I like a little bit of coarse salt with my sesame, so I'm just gonna put a few flakes of those in. So when you're making bagels, one of the things that's important is to make sure that you have your setup in place. Get your tools ready. Have a couple extra towels around. Your hands are gonna get messy. Make sure that your oven is preheated. Get everything in place, because once these bagels go in the water, um, it's go time, right? Okay, let me just clean my hands and then we can go put that in the oven. Okay, bagels are out. So I've got a mixture, I've got some everything, some poppies, some sesame seed, I did a couple plain, I did one plain with a little bit of coarse salt on the top because that can be really nice too. Can I just make you a bagel, is that cool? <laughs> this is kind of what I like about this recipe. I like this slightly more open structure. Let's make, uh, let's make two of these. A little bit of smoked salmon, a little bit of onion, caper, Korean chili. So these are Martin's bagels. You can make them in the cracks of a day and have them warm for brunch or at any other time. It's one of my favorite snacks. This to me is kind of like how I want to start my day. Um, Martin's bagels, cheers, enjoy. You know what I do? Here's my pro tip. What you do if you got a bunch of stuff on the counter like this is you take your cream cheese bagel and you just sort of like pick it up like that and then you get all that seed stuff back in there. Dang. Really good.